Solar panels have been with us for quite a while now, and in essence, they're pretty simple things. All they are is a semiconductor device that responds to light. Essentially, you stick them in the sun, and they'll produce a DC voltage in varying amounts, depending on how much sun is actually hitting them. Now, although that's really cool, in reality, it's about as much use as a chocolate teapot, because what we need to do is turn that variable DC voltage into something we can actually use. And, and it's very basic. It can be just something like a voltage regulator if we're going to do, say, run a light in the garden. But of course, when you use it in your house, what you need to do is change it into an AC voltage that's nice and regular and matches the line voltage of whichever country you're in. And that is the job of the inverter. Now, an inverter is actually a little more than four switches arranged in what's called a hedge bridge because it looks like a hedge. And by turning those off and on, what we can do is reverse the direction of the DC, and that is exactly what an AC is. Now, usually, of course, these switches aren't mechanical switches. They're, in fact, electronic components. And we can control the speed at which we turn them off and on to create the kind of AC that we want, whether it's 120 or 240. Now, being electronic components means that the power they can handle depends on the component that it is. And the more power you want to be able to handle, the bigger and beefier those components have to be. And of course, the more expensive they are. Now, there are other things in inverter as well. There's inductors and capacitors to smooth everything out so we get a nice smooth AC waveform. But that, in essence, is all an inverter actually does. Now, in early systems, solar installations weren't actually very complicated. They were wiped together in pretty much the same way as fairy lights, that is, in a long string in series. And in fact, they're called strings these days. And the whole lot was gathered together and stuck in a single inverter. And of course, over time, we discovered some of the problems with that. It turns out that solar panels and LEDs are cousins of each other. If you put light into a solar panel, it generates electricity. If you put electricity into a solar panel, it will in fact light up. And it's one way that manufacturers test whether the solar panels are any good or not. Of course, the reverse is true of light emitting diodes. You can turn a light emitting diode into a solar panel just by shining some light on it. But when it's a solar panel system, that's obviously a big problem because if you have two solar panels together and one's pumping out a higher voltage than the other, what it will do is pump some voltage into that solar panel and it will light up the solar panel and of course that reduces the efficiency of the overall system. Now, the manufacturers solved this little issue by sticking some diodes on the back of the panel. And diodes, of course, only allow electricity to flow in one direction. There are, in fact, two reasons you'd use a diode in a solar cell. One is as a blocking diode, which we've just explained, and the other is as what's called a bypass diode. So if there's a, a bad cell in there, there's an alternative path that the current can flow, and so a bad cell doesn't ruin the whole panel. And together, these form a very basic optimization system for a simple solar installation. Now, something else happens when you start adding DC volts in series, and you can see this with batteries. If you take a one and a half volt battery and stick another one on top of it, you'll get three volts out. And the same thing happens with solar panels. Now, your average solar panel is going to produce something like 50 volts or so. So two of them together on a string is going to be 100 volts, and 12 of them is going to be 600 volts. And that's a pretty lethal voltage. Anybody who's made their own home arc welder from two car batteries and a bit of steel rod can testify how hot that arc gets, hot enough to weld metal. So if you've got a 600 volt system and a bit of wire chafing, well, it's a very serious fire hazard. And of course, 600 volts is quite a voltage, so there's also a danger of death. And this has led to legislation in loads of countries requiring safety procedures to be put in there, including fast shutdowns. And I would argue that's what's led to the growth of these things. Now, the function they perform is actually not much different to the bypass diode. That is, they create an active pathway for shunting the current around the failing solar panel and preventing that fairy light effect that if one goes, they all go. 
But a lot of the legislation requires shutdown of the system at the panel level, not at the inverter level, and they also perform that function. So those two things, I think, are what led to the growth of adding optimizers onto solar panel systems. And now we're getting the panel and the electronics on the roof. Of course, at that stage of development, everything was still in series, and so it was all gathered together and taken down to an inverter ground base. And of course, those inverters are large and chunky and expensive, as they have to be, because they're dealing with high voltage and high ampage. And it wasn't long before some bright spark said, hang on a sec, we have to stick electronics up there because of the legislation. How about we make a cheaper inverter and stick it on the back? And it can be cheaper because a solar panel doesn't produce nearly as much and so the electronics don't have to be nearly as beefy and so it's very much cheaper and of course this is what you're finding you're finding micro inverters screwed onto the back of solar panels with all the advantages of a distributed system that is if one thing goes down the whole lot doesn't go down you still get much of the production if you want to extend your system well it's not really a problem because all these macro inverters produce the same AC voltage. Now you can add panels to a pre-existing system, but you have to stay in the constraints of the inverter that's in charge of the overall system. And of course you choose an inverter based on cost, you size it to your system. If it's too big, you're gonna spend far too much on the inverter. If it's too small and you add too many panels, you're gonna blow your inverter up. So your inverter has to be sized to the installation. Whereas with something like a micro inverter, of course, it doesn't. You can just keep on adding and adding if you want to. Now, of course, there are pros and cons to everything. And you'll have people arguing that a single inverter is better or people arguing that a macro inverter is better. You're bound to. I'm a fan of distributed systems because I think spreading the load across a system is always going to be a better answer, but that's just what I think about these micro-inverter systems. Now, of course, it does also carry two problems with it. One is you've got all the electronics up on the roof exposed to weather conditions, and the other is a, a simple manufacturing. Manufacturers go in and out of business. They change their models and compatibility as we go on, because a lot of these inverters have 25 year guarantees, may not be guaranteed. They may not be able to talk to each other in five or even 10 years time when you still got a working system. So that could well be an issue. I equally don't think it's going to be very long before somebody says to themselves, hang on a sec. Why don't we just take the wire from the solar panel and put it into the loft of the building, in which case you won't have a ground-based micro-inverter. Now here in the UK, we have tiled roofs, so putting a wire from the solar panel into the loft space actually isn't that challenging, and I'm pretty sure that if that caught on, there would be little adapters that you could put on your roof so that your micro-inverter installation was accessible. Either way, whether you think it's a single unit is a good idea, or a micro unit is a good idea. Certainly, micro inverters are having a huge effect and a huge impact on the solar market. And I think probably to the benefit of it, because it, it changes it from something where you need to calculate everything to very much a plug and play system, because those micro inverters can feed directly into your consumer unit. Anyway, I thought I would give a rundown on all this and how it all works together and a little bit of a potted history. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.